Have you ever wondered how your computer stores and accesses data so swiftly? Indeed, the speed at which our machines process information is nothing short of miraculous. At the heart of this digital wizardry is a key player, computer memory. This is the stage where data dances to the rhythm of ones and zeros. But not all memories are created equal. They come in different types, each with its unique characteristics and roles. One of these types, the static random access memory or SRAM, plays a pivotal role in determining the speed of data access. Imagine SRAM as the elite athlete in the memory team. It's swift, efficient, and always ready for action. It's like the sprinter who delivers the baton in a relay race, ensuring that the flow of data never breaks stride. But why should you, as a computer science student or a tech enthusiast, care about SRAM? Well, understanding SRAM is akin to peeking under the hood of your computer. It unravels the enigma of your machine's speed, giving you insights into how data is stored and accessed at lightning pace. SRAM is not just about speed though, it's also about reliability. SRAM is the trusted custodian of your data. Unlike other types of memory that need to refresh their data periodically, SRAM retains its data as long as power is applied. This makes it a go-to choice for applications that demand both speed and reliability. So, as we embark on this journey to unveil the secrets of your computer's speed, remember that SRAM is more than just another piece of technology. It's the silent hero that ensures your computer delivers peak performance, whether you're coding the next big app, playing your favorite game, or simply browsing the web. Now that we've set the stage, it's time to delve into the world of SRAM. Let's unveil the enigma of your computer's speed, one bit at a time. So, what makes SRAM special? Well, to begin with, SRAM, or Static Random Access Memory, uses bistable latching cells to store each bit of data. Imagine a cell as a tiny box that can hold a zero or a one. Each cell has cross-coupled inverters that form a latch, deciding whether it's a zero or a one. Now, unlike its cousin, the Dynamic RAM, or DRAM, SRAM doesn't need to constantly refresh itself to remember what it's storing. As long as power is supplied, SRAM will hold on to its data. It's like a loyal dog that won't let go of its bone as long as you're there to pet it. One of the key features of SRAM is its speed. It provides faster access times compared to DRAM. So, if you're in a hurry to read or write data, SRAM is your go-to guy. Speaking of reading and writing operations, SRAM supports both. Plus, the reading operation is non-destructive and the data can be written back without the need for a refresh cycle. You'll often find SRAM in high-speed caches within processors. The speed of SRAM helps to store and retrieve frequently accessed data rapidly, thereby improving the overall system performance. It's like having your favorite snacks at arm's length when you're watching a movie, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows with SRAM. Due to its larger cell size compared to DRAM, SRAM has a lower storage density. It's like having a large, spacious house, but fewer rooms. Consequently, SRAM tends to be more expensive per bit compared to DRAM. However, on the bright side, SRAM consumes less power when in standby mode compared to when it's in active operation. This makes it suitable for power-sensitive applications, where every bit of energy saved counts. So, as you can see, SRAM's unique characteristics make it an essential component in our computers. Despite its drawbacks such as low density and high cost, its fast access times, no refresh requirement and power efficiency make it a crucial player in the realm of computer memory. You might be wondering, where is SRAM used? Well, let's dive into the many applications of static random access memory. To start, SRAM is extensively used in cache memory within processors. It's there to provide fast access to the data that your CPU uses most frequently. With SRAM, your computer can quickly pull up that data, boosting your system's overall performance. But it's not just about speeding up your computer. SRAM also plays a critical role in register files within microprocessors. These registers store intermediate data during computation. If you think of your computer as a chef, then these register files are like the chopping boards where ingredients are prepared before they're cooked. And SRAM keeps these chopping boards working quickly and efficiently. Buffer storage is another area where SRAM shines. Buffer storage helps manage the data flow between different components of a system. Think of it as a traffic cop, directing the flow of data to prevent bottlenecks and ensure everything runs smoothly. And SRAM, with its fast access times and reliable performance, is perfectly suited for this role. SRAM also finds its way into our networking devices, such as routers and switches. 
It stores routing tables and temporary data, helping these devices direct internet traffic quickly and efficiently. In the world of embedded systems, SRAM is a star player. These systems, ranging from medical devices to car engines, require fast data storage and retrieval. And SRAM, with its speed and reliability, fits the bill perfectly. Finally, let's not forget about high-performance computing. In these systems, where speed and low latency are of utmost importance, SRAM is a critical component. It helps these powerful machines crunch through massive amounts of data at lightning-fast speeds. So there you have it. SRAM is not just a piece of hardware hidden away in your computer. It's a crucial component that powers a wide range of applications, from your personal devices to high-performance computing systems. From speeding up your computer to powering high-performance systems, SRAM is hard at work in the background. Now, let's compare SRAM with another popular type of memory, DRAM. In the world of computer memory, there's a constant tussle between speed, cost, and storage capacity. SRAM and DRAM, two types of RAM, are key players in this arena. Starting with access time, SRAM has the upper hand. Thanks to its beastable latching cells, SRAM can retrieve data faster than DRAM. This speed makes SRAM the go-to choice for applications that require quick read and write operations, such as cache memory and processors. However, when it comes to density and cost, DRAM takes the lead. DRAM cells are smaller, allowing for greater storage density. This means you get more storage per square inch with DRAM. Additionally, DRAM is generally less expensive per bit than SRAM, which can be a deciding factor for cost-conscious applications. Now let's talk about refresh requirements. Here, SRAM scores again. Unlike DRAM, SRAM retains its data as long as power is supplied, eliminating the need for periodic refreshing. This not only simplifies the memory management process, but also results in lower power consumption during standby making SRAM a preferred choice for power-sensitive applications. But what about use cases? Well, SRAM and DRAM each have their strengths, and their use largely depends on the specific needs of the application. SRAM, with its speed, is commonly used in cache memory and similar high-speed, low-latency applications. DRAM, on the other hand, with its high storage density and lower cost, is more suitable for main memory, where large amounts of data need to be stored. In conclusion, SRAM and DRAM are like two sides of the same coin. They serve different purposes, yet they're both indispensable in the realm of computer memory. SRAM excels in speed and simplicity, while DRAM shines in density and cost-effectiveness. While both SRAM and DRAM have their roles to play, understanding their differences can help you better appreciate their specific applications. Let's recap what we've learned about SRAM. Static Random Access Memory, or SRAM, is a volatile semiconductor memory that uses bistable flip-flops to store each bit of data. Unlike DRAM, which requires regular refreshing, SRAM retains its data as long as power is supplied. This makes it an ideal choice for cache memory, register files, and other applications where rapid and reliable access to data is paramount. The structure of SRAM cells is quite unique. Each cell comprises cross-coupled inverters, forming a latch that can hold a zero or a one. Both read and write operations are supported, with reading being non-destructive and data being written back without the need for a refresh cycle. In terms of speed, SRAM outpaces DRAM, offering faster access times, which is why it's extensively used in cache memory within processors to store frequently accessed data. This speed helps improve overall system performance, but there's a trade-off. SRAM cells are larger in size compared to DRAM cells, resulting in lower storage density. Consequently, SRAM tends to be more expensive per bit compared to DRAM. Despite its higher cost, SRAM is a popular choice for power-sensitive applications due to its lower power consumption in standby mode. It's used in register files within microprocessors to store intermediate data during computation, in buffer storage to manage data flow between different components and in networking devices such as routers and switches for storing routing tables and temporary data. Even in the world of high-performance computing, where speed and low latency are critical, SRAM finds its place. Comparing SRAM and DRAM, the former offers faster access times, but the latter wins in terms of storage density and cost. While SRAM doesn't require periodic refreshing, DRAM does. SRAM is commonly used in cache memory and applications where speed is crucial, while DRAM is more suitable for main memory due to its higher density. In conclusion, both SRAM and DRAM serve different purposes. 
They're both essential components in modern computing systems, each addressing specific needs in terms of speed, density, and cost. Next time your computer processes data at lightning speed, remember the crucial role SRAM plays in making that happen.